you're just joining in welcome to the maiden edition of etiquettes um during the course of this discourse i'll take you through uh, what etiquette really means for us here at um honorable justice innocent music foundation and uh what it means to to those who are reaching out what it means to the entrepreneurship um, industry as well uh, the entrepreneurship world uh those are some of the things you expect to also know during the course of this discussion i would just quickly make an introduction of the honorable justice innocent women's literature foundation which is um, the slide you're currently seeing on your screen and through the crucible of today's discourse what we're really here to to do now i, I know you may have been to a lot of entrepreneurship summits but i tell you this series because it's a series this is the first in the series we'll be holding etiquette it's not like anything you've been to before not necessarily because you'll be hearing the first uh, hearing these things for the first time but because most of what you'll be hearing are backed up with uh, the practical knowledge from entrepreneurs in the industry and you know uh, there's this thing that comes with biographies i was privileged to read uh uh obasanjo's biography one of them the watch and during that during that uh, my, my period of reading he made it clear that one of the fastest ways to learn is through biography so we will we'll be learning from the life experiences practical experiences of our speakers through the course of this series and it's my honor to be the moderator to take you through this right all right uh this is honorable justice innocent omezu Lique foundation as you may already know uh about us honorable justice innocent omezu Lique foundation is an international non-governmental organization formed to honor the legacy of late honorable justice innocent as you omezu Lique, ofr fcirb fiian who at the time of his death was an acclaimed professor of land and property law, authored over 25 books and served as chief judge of Enugu State, including the longest, longest serving chief judge in Southern Nigeria. Now, the foundation, that's the Honorable Justice Innocent Mesliki Foundation, delivers its mission through the promotion of excellent legal education, research, and charity initiatives. Some of our facilities and programs include the law library legal research center annual lectures workshops and seminars and then the educational grants and funding okay uh it just came to my knowledge that i didn't properly introduce myself before i i commenced taking you through the profile so i'll do that quickly my name is prince excellence james room levi i work at the uh, honorable justice innocent Ms. Lige foundation as the sme business developer and as an IT personnel. All right, so uh, what is it about the Ugochuku Azubike SME Fund? Now, this program, Etiquette, is under the Ugochuku Azubike SME Development Initiative. Now, one of the one of the uh, goals or one of the aspirations we have in the initiative is to promote sound entrepreneurship education. Now, uh, about the Ugochuku Azubike SME Fund project. The Ugochuku Azubike SME Fund is founded in remembrance of Ugochuku Chidera Azubike Umezlike, who was a business mind and entrepreneur whose vibrant life was cut short in 2010. Now, the Ugochuku Azubike SME Fund is a grant scheme designed to help create new micro and small businesses and enterprises. Now, if you're joining us from uh, any of our social media platforms one of the things you would have gotten there is the fact that by being in this in this um discourse you know more about the sme fund i'll be taking you through it now but i'll also take you through it again uh during uh, by the end of of our discourse today okay so it's a grant scheme designed to help create new micro and small businesses and enterprises the sme fund will in its in its early stages, target independently run enterprises in farming, consumer goods sale, and market trading, offering them the opportunity to receive a grant between 15,000 Naira and 500,000 Naira. What's the purpose for the fund? The purpose is to help nurture the spirit of entrepreneurship within communities. Um, 
and also help individuals grow their business their businesses regardless of the size we have a mission which is to support bottom tier independently owned enterprises and create new businesses by providing funding to transform produce and scale into sustainable businesses that will support themselves and others in the community creating a long lasting impact what are the criteria for selecting uh, um, applicants or for this for the SME fund? So, in order to be eligible to receive a grant under the Butuko Azubike SME fund, as an applicant, you must demonstrate genuine intention to start a business. Individuals who already run a small scale, verifiable, independently owned enterprise in Nigeria can apply as well. So you, are, you already own a small scale business, you're already an entrepreneur, which uh, are one of our target audiences in etiquettes, given that the information from this um, series is not just for aspiring entrepreneurs, but to also help guide entrepreneurs who are also in the industry. And the fund also has such a um, such uh, allocation for you to such that if you're already an entrepreneur, you're already running an enterprise in Nigeria, you have the opportunity to apply as well. The application form is av available through the link. Uh, bit.ly slash apply hjius sme i'll call it again bit dot ly forward slash or backward slash rather two backward slashes then b b i uh sorry let, let me take you through that again we have bit dot ly then we have the backward slash and then apply hjius sme no spacing is a is a single word apply a w p l y h j i u f then s m e go there if you the application form and the selection fees uh commences which the during which the applications which are coming from our online forms will undergo a decision making and selection stage after which successful applicants will be announced and the grants will be dispersed. So you know someone who is an entrepreneur who needs um, this fund because the, the idea behind this is to impact lives. The idea behind this is to impact businesses, is to um, upgrade the, the, the systems in our communities, inspire innovation in communities by virtue of it's, um, um, funding entrepreneurs who have wonderful ideas that can impact their communities as well. So you know an entrepreneur like that or you yourself are such an entrepreneur, please do well to please do well to um to register for or to apply to to the sme fund oh all right all right i'll i'll, I'll do that i i just received a message from someone uh that asked if i could oh thank you so much joshua thank you so much for for sending that in all right um about etiquettes why are we here etiquettes is a virtual entrepreneurship interactive entrepreneurship series with industry professionals geared towards sound entrepreneurship education it aims to provide professional insight into industries where the youths and general public can commence small or medium enterprises while guiding already existing entrepreneur enterprise owners in the right direction now for the maiden edition of etiquettes we are focusing on real estate as an industry and analyzing the hurdles and opportunities that exist in the industry for small and medium entrepreneurs. Etiquette is a brainchild of the Ugochukwu Azubike SME Development Initiative. Now, for the purpose of today's discourse, we are looking at the real estate industry, of which we'll be having a guest, an industry professional from the real estate industry, who uh, we are privileged to have here uh, in our midst, who will also... Um, answer the questions we have with regards to this industry and help prefer uh, guidelines that entrepreneurs who are on this discourse and who will also have access to this discourse subsequently would be able to would be able to um, maximize the, the, the informations they get from it all right our guest speaker meet our guest our guest on today's discourse is mr okuchuku Okonkwo. Oguchuku is a geologist who transitioned successfully into real estate development and has carved a niche for himself in the sector. 
He's presently the COO and the MD of Wuba Group of Companies, a Nigerian multinational conglomerate involved basically in real estate, agriculture, medical, health, pharmaceuticals, and machineries. He also serves on the board of directors in various organizations such as Astre, Seed, and Universe. Okuchuku Okwankwo is skilled in real estate development, project management services, land and property sales, and social entrepreneurship. What more, he is a retractor and an advocate of income diversification. He has empowered hundreds of young persons in his circle of, of, of influence. Okuchuku is a seasoned businessman with experience in a range of industries, including IT, construction, and energy. He is aware of the demand for a broad range of skills to support socioeconomic development in Africa and beyond. This is the point where I say, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's an honor to welcome Mr. Okuchuku Okwonko to this discourse. Good morning, sir. Okay, good morning, um, Michael. Um, I trust you're doing well. I'm doing very fine. Uh, we are, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you on, on today's discourse, sir. And, uh, okay, the pleasure, the pleasure is my um, mindful of where I think I'm the one, I'm the first person starting the series. Sorry, I don't know, can you hear me very well? Uh, yes, I can, I can. Okay, okay, I just wanted to confirm that. Thank you very much. No, oh, okay, sir. Um, quickly, um, can you just give us a, an introduction? This is entrepreneurship we're looking at. Can you give us an, an introduction into entrepreneurship what what do we expect personally i have a theme for innovative entrepreneurship because i see entrepreneurship beyond just um duplicating ideas or multiplying ideas without any form of originality I have this thing for entrepreneurship that has to do with innovating um ideas peculiar new solutions to already existing problems in societies so can you give us your your definition of entrepreneurship how do you see entrepreneurship sir oh, okay thank you very much basically um being an entrepreneur it's basically you uh having to start up something uh without doing the uh it's the five uh duties of constraints are like picking up responsibilities um assigning rules to present uh being an entrepreneur it's always not easy and uh it also draws down to when uh you want to be successful as an entrepreneur you have to you need to have two key factors that will make you successful one should be your uh, uh the right mindset yes mm -hmm. when i say the right mindset it has to be your belief system what do you believe on um that, 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 that there's a different thing when you're trying to say you want to start up you want to be a shoemaker for instance and um mm. what is the belief what do you want to what gap do you want to fill in between how do you want to run this business you must have believed in yourself that one day you're going to be the world leading shoemaker okay. now that, that is actually your belief system it should be what is inside because most often everyone wants to be a ceo everyone wants to mm. be an entrepreneur yeah mm. but uh the the challenges and the tax that comes with being a ceo or an entrepreneur you can't face that mm. so what are your belief system why do you need, really want to uh, move into the uh, sector why do i want to do real estate why mm. do i want to be an architect why do i want to be uh, a, a food vendor why do i want to do this why do i want to do that so it definitely has to do with your belief system and another thing is another thing you need to also consider it's very important here it's the proper information Mm -hmm. Moving into a particular sector, not given getting a full information, you fail. That's why most often you always, when you want to start up a business, one will ask you, you need to do a visibility study about mm -hmm. your business. Yeah. Know your areas, know the people you're looking at, what, which person is your targeted audience, mm -hmm. which person is your market, where, do, where, where am I going to set up uh, this? No. Let me give for instance. You you want to do a laundry a laundry shop for instance. Now, are you going to set up a laundry store in 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 a rural area? Sorry, sorry, not a rural area. Are you going to set it up in an in a in a residential area or in a commercial area? Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't do your visibility studies very well, if you set up your laundry store for instance, I'm using laundry as an example. You set okay. it up in a commercial area. Trust me. 
you're going to run out of business. Mm -hmm. If you're doing it in a, in a residential area, you're going to achieve something. You're going to achieve success. Why? Because regardlessly, indirectly or directly, you can still get your clients around, your yeah, customers yeah, around that yeah. area because definitely someone wants to come out from his house to give you clothes to wash and mm. iron. That's how the things have to be. You need to get the proper information before moving into a particular sector. And another thing also you need to also understand into doing this business, you also need to get see the big picture and you need to also be able to communicate your vision. Mm. Um, if, I'm, if I'm trying to do, uh, uh, being an entrepreneur, I want to do a business, I want to do real estate, I need to be able to communicate my vision. I need to communicate my vision. People need to understand what I'm trying to do. People need to see, because I am the one seeing the big picture here, but other persons need to key into this vision. Okay, this is how you want to do You want You don't want to do it. You know, conventional real estate, how others do the buy and sell the junk mm -hmm. goods. No. Yeah. yeah. You have your own plan. You have a pattern how you actually want to achieve those things. You also need to have a master plan of selling. You also need to have your master plan because definitely you don't have a master plan, you will be out of the way. You also need to also master the power of selling, the act of selling. If you start up a business without knowing how to sell, if you're not a sell machine, my brother, you will go to, out of the business, trust me. Because it is a competition because you also need to know which persons are your competitors. Mm. I mean, real estate, I know my competitors. I know what to do. I need to. I need to leverage on their on their on their mistakes for me to be better. Mm. Do you understand? Now, yeah, these are particular yeah. ways you also need to understand basically because you need to master the art of selling. You also need to um, you need to believe in what you're also selling. That matters because um, I always tell us something before you do business. You need to sell yourself first before you sell your product. You need to be the brand ambassador of yourself first before mm. you become the brand ambassador of your company. Mm. You're the public image of your company, trust me. Mm. And that's the truth. So now, if you don't believe in selling, you're going to fade out. Because you need to believe in what you're selling and you need to do it with integrity. Because now, uh, I always tell a person in real estate that people are actually not buying the land. Mm. People are actually all the building of the property. People are actually buying you. As a realtor, as a, as a developer, as anything, as a real estate consultant, people are actually buying you. They're actually not buying what you're selling. Yeah. Because people yeah. need to believe, people need to understand you have this integrity. People need to see that, okay, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to entrust these funds to this person. I'm giving over 10 to 50,000 naira. So, or, sorry, 10 to 50 million naira to this person. Will this money be secured? There needs to be a secret around you. For mm. if you don't have that, you're not ready for the business. And another key factor people get to always uh, uh, forget is always not having a mentor. You need to have a mentor as an entrepreneur, yes. Because you being an mentor, your mentor should give you your guidelines. Your mentor should, should command you on things to do because now you're looking for a mentor i can't be in real estate and now I, I will be going to get a mentor that's into shoemaking <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> you get yeah. that right you yeah, can't yeah, yeah. so it definitely you need to get persons into your own field if you are agriculturalist if you're into if you're into shoemaking if you're into uh, uh laundry if you're into mm. transportation if you're into mm. it look for persons in that field to get as a mentor yeah. that's how you go to succeed now look for you go study a business that started the same year. Mm. Look at this two, Mr. A and Mr. B. Mr. A has an has a mentor, Mr. B doesn't have a mentor. Go and check the success rate. Yeah. Mr. A is going to be much it's going to be successful than Mr. A. Sorry, Mr. B. Do you understand? So that's what yeah, yeah. people to understand in this whole thing. Another thing you also need to know is this: you don't forget, you need to be learning. You must mm. keep learning. You need to read books. You need to watch videos. You need to uh, attend conferences. Listen, go to seminars. Listen to podcasts that has to do with your business. Every business has a life experience. Every business, persons have tried that. Now, yeah. AI definitely is going to be taking over some jobs today. Yeah. In the yeah. society, what will currently yeah. happening. Now, have you been able to understand the AI? How does AI work? 
there are persons that have been able to understand those things, get a mentor in that area, it will help you grow faster. And that's just the thing. Do you understand? So these are basically things one needs to understand as an entrepreneur before shooting me to be an entrepreneur. That's all. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you so much, uh um Stokuchuku. You know, um why we talked one thing that really gave me joy was in, in the course of publicity for this discourse, one of the things I, I had to tell persons I said this is not just a series on on the real estate. This is a series, a series on entrepreneurship. And I'm sure with yeah. the with the way we have started, those who are already um, in the discourse can see that we are making progress in that line as well. I, I was privileged to. I'm still on it though. Read the story of the man who started Tom's, and you the the point you raise is a very powerful one. But I'll still give reference to it um, later on. I want to know, how did you start off into real estate? Do you have an educational background in geology, in agriculture, and you're a realtor? You know? And it's, it's wonderful because there are courses such as estate management for five years. You have courses such as agriculture for another five years. I, I say sorry, architecture for another five years. You have um, courses such as building technology. And, and these are um courses that reflect around what you do as a realtor so how did you how did you make that switch because i'm sure someone is saying uh i mean animal health sciences for instance so what is the relationship between myself and uh, real estate I, I would like to have your, your view on that sir okay uh, preferably just basically when you say um you say, uh, I'm trying to uh, give an example first. Um, okay, uh, someone studying um, English and the end of the day being a hair yeah, vendor. Yeah. You don't. Now, this has nothing to do with the what you studied. Oh. It basically, it has to do with what you have passion for. Mm. That's the thing. Now, um, uh, 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 now the thing is, is, how did I transition when I was still in school and the right um, Basically, I, I didn't just uh, have passion for real estate. Actually, my first time I I started being, I, I was an MC, uh, master of ceremony. I was also I was an event planner. I managed event person and the rich. At some point, I noticed that I was transitioning from that to real estate. Yeah. I noticed I was yes, moving in from that to real estate. And okay, how did I start? I started from the normal uh, uh, local. Uh, um, uh, okay, so someone needs a, a plot of land around my locality. Then mm -hmm. pay. People that want to build hostels and the rest. Okay, I don't know that because I think when I came into uh, school, then I, I actually did part of an agent, uh, being an agent, house yeah. agent. Okay. For a while for two years before i moved into being an mc now i just dropped it because it's just stressful uh at, at some point because most often you have to walk or you have to visit about five to seven properties yeah. how before uh, one you know what it means when students are actually looking for something comfortable mm -hmm. and back then you won't compare back then in in, uh, in 2013 2014 now with what we currently have currently now on the campus now uh, there have been a lot of changes and now it was stressful with the sun, with the rain. And I know people will tell you that I don't enjoy this. And yeah. for every inspection you're going for, you are charging 2,000 areas of them. And 2,000 yeah. doesn't worth it because out of the 2,000, you're still going to transport yourself, yeah. moving down to a location, you're going to walk. But if mm. you don't want to transport mm. yourself, mm. you just chose a new walk, man. So it was very, very stressful. So at some point, I had to leave it. Focus more on being an MC, being an event uh, manager. And it keeps on going. But how I left being an MC totally, uh, I was shocked. You understand? Because uh, uh, all of a sudden, I noticed that I was now doing real estate. Okay. All thanks to my uh, former boss, uh, which was uh, uh, the CEO, Mark Anthony uh, Chimizio Kiki, which was the CEO of uh, Cardinal. Uh, mm -hmm. That was uh, before COVID-19. Uh, then I normally reach out to him. I tell him, okay, do you have properties around this area? I have a client that actually wants to uh, buy. So at some point, I, I wrote him on WhatsApp. I told him, no, boss, please don't be offended that I've not been able to make any sales. He told me, yeah. no, don't be, don't be, I shouldn't be worried that it's a process, it's a gradual process that um, that uh, I, 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 I shouldn't be getting, I shouldn't expect the results immediately, but okay. definitely the result will come. 
Mm. And one way or the other, that was in 2019, because COVID was in 2020. He reached out to me and told me, OP, um, uh, we need to talk. I said, OK, fine. I came down. He told me, uh, yes, I, I'm actually starting up my real estate. He's already in real estate, though, but officially going uh, open, like officially owning an estate yeah. to his own self and the rest. That he wants me to, he wants to work with me and uh, we can do this together. Wow, well, like I was like, wow. He said, yeah. uh, he doesn't expect me to give him me my reply immediately. I told him, no. <laughs> I'm giving you my reply. Yes, it is something I want to. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, because one thing that has to do real estate is that you must have to know how to communicate. Mm -hmm. That's that's one of the secrets of selling. If you don't know how to communicate with your client, you, you you're, you're left out. So I understand that I know how to communicate to persons. I know yeah. how to ask questions for me to get my reply. So and I told him, I told him fine. And I told him okay, fine. But I should still go back home gets to understand better if it's truly what I want to do. I told you, fine. I went back. I didn't just want to give that and rush. Three days later, I called him back. I told him, I'm ready. He was like, okay, fine. We're going to come we started, we got, we started, we got our office and uh, yeah. I, I was, uh, I, I was then the general manager before I left the company before I started working with uh, the mobile groups currently mobile now. Group. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. And um, uh, it was, it was, it was a smooth one. I learned a lot from him. Uh, not really, because uh, uh, he always tell me that he didn't have the opportunity to learn, but he's always going to share what he has actually learned to me. Uh, it, it wasn't the roller coaster, though, but we had the ups and downs in businesses and the rest. We started from the first stage down to the second to the third. And I learned what it has to do with communicating. Now, coming back to what you said, being uh, someone being into estate management, running in estate. My my boss didn't. My former boss didn't study <laughs> uh, estate uh, uh, management. He was. Oh. I think he studied microbiology. <laughs> yeah, either microbiology or biochem. Yes. Microbiology. So wow. everything has to be on the desire, on the thing, you know what you want. You could mm. see someone, person, persons, persons that actually studied computer sciences, and they tell you that he's one of the. Uh, which has uh, 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 businessman either in the main market or anything. Mm. It depends on the mm. line you want to do. Mm. Charles is a lawyer, but he chose music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see these things. Yeah. So this is actually how, what's the passion? What's the passion? So uh, to cut the long story short, I, I left Cadillac last year, uh, November, uh, starting with Mobile Group, uh, December, uh, trying to replicate everything I've been able to learn over the Land. years, kind of learn, yeah. and current years, and, the and we're doing a great job. Because I always tell you the thing that if you don't learn, if you don't learn, you will fail. I learned from mm -hmm. the mistakes from my from my past uh, 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 work, and replicating it here, not to make such a mistake. Mm -hmm. Because uh, these are just things you people really don't understand. Mm -hmm. Because you must start from somewhere. Mm -hmm. I, I get it a lot when person say. I want to do real estate. I want to be a realtor. I always tell them that you can't just want to do real estate. Do you have a passion for that? There yeah. must be passion for what you're doing. Yes. It should be passion for what you're doing. But if there's no passion for what you're doing, you're going to read it. I know persons that are going to post or uh, write about real estate for, for, for one month, two months. They don't get any uh, buyer. They leave. They leave. Up. And yeah. Stops. They, they stop selling. But they stop. I always tell them that you don't know when your clients are going to come. You might yeah. start for the first time and hit your jackpot, and for you to get another time might be two months or three months time or mm -hmm. in six months time for yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you understand the secret of selling, understand yeah. how to close your deals very well. There's one thing about you getting a client, and another thing on how you close your deals. This is very very important. Understand. So yes, these are basically how I was able to transition from uh, from my area of studies down to doing real estate. And uh, uh, trust me, trust uh, tr trust me. Uh, me uh, I, I won't tell you that I've regretted it. Uh, it's yeah. been amazing. I keep learning every day. I keep exploring mm -hmm. new things. I I still try to be better in everything yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, sincerely, um, I, I, I'm I'm learning a lot from your from your from from your um your story and one of some key things i've picked out is the youth the leaders of tomorrow we we can leverage on the power of mentorship because entrepreneurship 
can be smooth. I, I won't say stress-free, I, I won't say, but can be less hazardous. The, the um, damages incurred can be um, reduced to a very large extent if we leverage on the power of mentorship. And another thing I, I got from that point you, you, um, you also raised is replicating what we learn because there is, it's one thing to, to learn, it's one thing to glean, and it's another thing to also seek to put into practice what I learn because it's in practicing that I am able to um, know if I actually really learned those things or not. We are 33 minutes into the discourse, um, ladies and gentlemen, and sincerely, it's been a, a wonderful time for me so far. I, I don't know about you. If the discourse has been beautiful for you, you can just leave a note in, in the chat. But we have a couple of other questions, and within the short time, we we'll still have what well, we just quickly want to know what opportunities what income generating opportunities are open to entrepreneurs in real estate because um real estate is not a fun um, it's, it's, it's not just passion now what what opportunities should i become a realtor should i become a real estate developer what opportunities am i looking to maximize in the real estate industry okay um thank you very much um being a realtor is different. Being a, a developer is different. Okay. For, for, for one to move into um, uh, being a, a, a developer, you need to have a lot of cash. You need to have the money because the, the, the fund. Because being a developer, you need to acquire land, start developing and the rest. Being a realtor, you're also basically just being a realtor. You want to build up your commissions and move into, you can move from being a realtor to developer. Now you make your commissions, from when you uh, uh, sell out any lease, you understand? Mm. But before mm. I uh, move into your questions, I actually want to also uh, uh, guide our, our audience on what real estate is. Yes. Real estate is real okay. property, yes. It's real properties. You can also say real estate is also physical properties. And uh, real estate is, uh, is, is a land and also properties on it. Anyone who buys and sells landed property is also into real estate business. Okay. Do you understand? Uh, some persons will also say it, it, it is real assets. Real assets. Now, moving into the uh, income generating opportunities in real estate. One, uh, real estate is a very um, luxurious industry that offers numerous income generating opportunities. Mm. Yes. From ranging from the rental down to the commercial, down mm. to the leasing, mm. down to the uh, land flipping. A lot. It's luxurious. So it chose you you decide where you want to come in. You depend you decide where you want to go in, you understand? Because yeah. there's a lot of cash in real estate. Everybody wants to invest. Unlike before. Everyone wants to own a piece of land. Yeah. Outside from what the person originally inherited from his father, his mm. mother, or any relative. You understand? Mm. That's yeah. where the power of real estate comes. That's what we say the real asset. Your real estate can be your plaza, can be your 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 filling stations, can be a hat, anything. You understand? That's yeah. basically. Then the next point we're going to be looking at is also there are many ways to make money in real estate markets. There are some point. There are some top point uh, income generating opportunities in the real estate. Uh, this is actually what I discussed initially. I told you one: the rental properties. Uh, this involves in uh, leasing and renting out properties for residential or commercial purposes. You understand? Yeah. Now, yeah. If, if you choose to come in as um, as a, if you're a realtor, you want to be a developer, you want to stand up in, 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 in rental properties. You can come in as a rental into renter. Now, you you lease out properties, you rent out properties for residential and commercial purposes. Now. Yeah. Flipping of house. Now, what we talk when you talk about flipping of house or flipping of land comes in. Now, flipping of house involves you buying a property, renovating it, mm. and selling it for profit. Now, you might see there. There are a couple of areas you might have gone to. You might see an uh, abandoned building where someone has built from foundation level to the uh, roofing level, but it doesn't have money against continue. Yeah. Come meet up the person, the owner, and tell the person, let's discuss terms and conditions. Okay, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to take this up, renovate it, do a lot of things, and now we'll sell it out. I'm going to take this percentage. You're going to take this percentage. Do you understand? Yeah. Or yeah. I'm going to build it. I'm going to own it. I'm going to hold it for 20 years or 30 years. After 30 years, I'm going to give it back to you. 
<laughs> now, what I'm doing in the space of one to 30 years or one to 20 years is actually renting out, making profit. Okay. And before I go into such business, I will make sure that I must, I must get back my capital and yeah. also make good profit before I can easily go into that contract. Now, another thing you also need to understand is about real estate development. This involves you buying new properties and selling them at a, at a, 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 a good profit. This has to do when you want to actually you want to start up a real estate business, mm -hmm. for instance, or you want to start, you want to you want to get a land, you build mm -hmm. on it, you sell, or you want to get a land, you develop like okay, you put on the perimeter fencing, do your drainages, and you sell to the individuals. Why the individuals now build? You're making profit. Let's okay. see, for instance, you get a bulk land for uh, 200 plots, for instance, and uh, it might be selling for 2 million per plot. Mm -hmm. And you buy at 2 million per plot as a developer. Now, you start off developing it, start grading, um, doing your drainages, putting on electricity and the rest. But mind you, the prices change with time. With time, okay. Now, your promo, yes, your promo price might definitely want to sell. Okay, you bought at... 2 million naira i think i'll start selling for 3.5 million naira or 4 million naira or 5 million naira and also you also need to understand that your prices actually determines the location where your property is located at okay what are the prospects not all land has good prospects mm. yes there are lands you're going to buy they are going to develop in five years faster. The land they are going to buy is going to take them 30 to 50 years for them to develop. Okay. So you have to also understand what are the prospects this land actually has. This have property you're trying to get. Yes. What does it have to offer you? Now, you also need to talk about the vacation, the vacation rentals. Now, uh, most people don't understand this. That is why most people have to go out to the uh, beachfront get properties now this actually is quite a luxurious option whereby the popular uh, uh tourist uh tourist uh destinations look for properties around the areas you know okay. where they're moving to they rent it for travelers coming in so if for instance you you have a a, a, a beach front around your area and that place people comes there to see the beach you can have mm. you can have an accommodation there mm. a, an estate company can have an, a, 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 an apartment where people can easily lodge for three to uh one to three nights mm. and they might pay about two hundred and fifty thousand naira per night mm. okay I, I i know the uh uh the obudukatu ranch uh, yeah. in calabar yeah. per night there it's two hundred and fifty thousand naira wow yeah it's only at fifty thousand naira, and the, the 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 apartments are on the on the hills. So now this is what real estate offers you. This is vacation rental. Now, the 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 state government is actually making money from it. Right. You know that? So yeah. there are several ways one can easily make our money. As, uh, we we are coming into real estate, and also going to be looking at the real estate investment trust uh this actually uh you can generate passive income by investing in uh real estate investment trusts uh while they pay you uh dividends you don't need to uh deal with stress or or directly involved in the uh, management of the property you just need to just invest your uh funds inside there and you're good to go do you understand yeah um, I think, yes yeah i i think I, 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 on the comment section i'm also going to uh we drop in the link on the comment section when you could easily go back and read up because I've I've, I've talked about that uh, sometime um, I think either last month or around December time on my post so you could mm -hmm. go through read about the whole real estate investment trust investment because trust. it's also going to guide you yes trust yes it's also going to guide you on what to do and what not to do do you understand yeah. now uh, I I know you might have been hearing this always land banking trust me I know you've been hearing about the land banking thing. If you, if you have not heard about land banking, land banking is, the, uh, is in essence where one purchases a land and holds it for the future development. Mm. Now, this is places where people can easily buy land at a good location. Yes, you are seeing the future. You are seeing the future, which other persons are not seeing. You buy all the land when it's cheaper and you sell with massive return. 
I, 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 I was, I was listening to a podcast the other day. Someone was sharing uh, on podcast that she actually wants to buy from the man a land, and the man he was proposing for one point six million. The man refused. Wow. This land, this man bought this land, twenty plots for twenty million naira, which eight years ago, wow. and now. That property is worth 60 billion naira. Wow. Now, 26, 28 years yeah. ago is the big money. One, one, yeah, one, yeah, one, yeah. one billion naira for instance for 20 plus big yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, but did yeah. you see the future? He was seeing the future. Mm. He was seeing the future. But other persons were you know were not buying into that. There are persons that have that money more than that man. Yeah. But yeah. He wasn't ready. And, to, and, 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 and the funny the funny thing about that God, that place was actually a water lock area mm. then wow it was a lot of log but over a year between eight years later this place is worth 60 billion and the man is not ready to sell <laughs> actually actually yeah not ready to yeah. sell the woman was proposing for a plot one point six the man said he's not selling so uh, only god knows when he wants to sell. when he would eventually <laughs> yeah he want to sell so if he eventually he want to sell he's going to be making a lot of money sorry money because it's actually the power of land banking no you might have had people tell you that they bought a land at two hundred thousand naira, mm. and after 20 years currently the land is worth 40 million naira. yeah yeah you, have, you could see where people tell you that they bought a house for 70 million naira, and the mm. value of the house currently is once 150 million naira. that's mm. what it happens mm. that's how all those things definitely works in you understand now yeah, we also yeah. look at what we're talking about also uh income generating uh opportunities in real estate we also look about the real estate crowd crowdfunding now the crowdfunding is a platform where it allows uh investors to pool their monies and invest in real estate projects or properties uh, investors can earn returns through rental income properties appreciation or interest on loans mm. now you, you might want to start up a business and you guys you might not own everything in real estate sometimes you don't need to own everything to start start real estate you might have 60 percent of the money while your parents have the 40 percent bring it up together start it up that's how it works you're, mm -hmm. you're you you you're moving into the real estate crowdfunding because it's going to help you move faster because if you have 60 percent let's use for instance that you're going for a 200 plus mm -hmm. and the value of the 200 plus it's uh it's 500 000, five, sorry 500 million naira for instance yeah and 500 million naira you have only 60 percent of that money mm. some persons might not they might not be willing yeah, to yeah. give you be willing to uh, mm. yes yes some persons might not be willing yeah there are some points yes yeah, 70 percent of most lands being bought are actually not bought on outright in on the box sale you have to buy at some particular percentage and now pay on installment before you continue you finish yes but if you still have persons that can still come in as a group of friends at uh, as, as families as a group as a company you can generate bring in your copy your your your, your funds together and push it up you understand and buy what you want to buy now I also look at uh property uh, property uh management you can end by managing properties on behalf of landlords, real estate investors. Um, the, these investments uh, involve overseeing tax such as re uh, rent, tenant screening, rent collection, uh, maintenance and repairs to earn a particular percentage of the property. Do you understand? Yeah. Uh, in the rental income, in exchange of the property, in exchange of your service. Now, this actually goes in where when they say you, I want you to manage my property, I don't know. You might have gone getting uh, uh, occasions where persons might tell you, I just need building my filling station. Yeah, I want yeah. you to, your company should manage my filling station. So your company will have to see to that. As a realtor, you can manage your filling station. As a realtor, you can manage a plaza. Mm. Okay, let's see. Out of every money that is being paid, you earn a particular percentage from that one. That means you're managing those things. In yeah, terms of yeah. rental collections, you do that. In terms of servicing uh, things, when they might be either less use, you, you you might be in the plaza and uh, it's more get bad. You might have an electrical issue. They call you on. That's mm -hmm. where you when you hear people say caretaker. 
Mm, well, looking, we're waiting for the caretaker yeah. to come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's just actually the yeah, thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so you get yeah. to manage people's properties for you to aim. So there are a lot of places on ways you can make money from real estate. It is boundless. It is boundless. You understand? Now yeah. you can become a realtor. Uh, people basically know realtors as real estate agents uh, who help uh, home properties buyers find new homes or properties and guide the client through the process of buying these properties to get percentage in return. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Uh, for, for persons that are actually interested, can easily DM me if they would choose to learn more on how they can easily sell properties very well. You understand? Mm. You understand? Because definitely we also have classes for realtors that actually want to pay realtors for the companies too and also sell for us. And um, that's basically the things that are on how one can really generate income. Income. Yes. In From real estate. Estate. There are less opportunities. Yes. In income generating uh, opportunities in real estate. So that's basically some uh, few points I, I, I'm basically going to emphasize on. And that's it. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Okutuku. Uh, for those who just joined, this is Etiquettes. And Etiquettes is a virtual series on entrepreneurship. The, the skills, the know-how you learn um, on our series are things that you can apply within any area of industry as long as you're an entrepreneur. The key guidelines are guidelines, principles you can implement anywhere um during the the beginning of this discourse i i remember talking about the gochuku azubiki sme fund and i will still run a recap by the end or by the time we're closing this discourse so if you did not meet up uh, with uh, when we talked on the sme fund just stay uh, just stay tuned and we'll get to that shortly it's uh Okay, so um, I have a couple of questions here, but for want of time, for want of time, I, I just want to pick um one. So SME is uh, a SME is a, a type of entrepreneurship. SME is a you know while you're talking, I, I heard uh I heard two hundred million, and the moment I was like, okay, uh, some someone who saw a uh, title, so, you know, maximizing entrepreneurship with limited resources. Will be considering just you know logging off because 200 where exactly i i am imagining a, a startup entrepreneur who maybe just wants to change the the um to change change um well i say the initiative in his society change how persons see things in his society the perspective and you're telling him he needs 200 million to do it and the guy is like okay yeah. um okay. No, no, I, I know, I, I understand you. I understand you actually. But then uh to to tone it down, we know that real estate development, uh thank you so much for helping us create that um be, uh, giving us that definition that helped us separate the two of them, real estate development from being a realtor. But then how do we maximize real estate with limited resources? Say I want to be a realtor, how exactly can I maximize that? Um by having limited resources, must, must I have 200 million? Must I be buoyant enough to, like you said, uh, what if the person doesn't even have that 70% you talked about? You know, the 70% to pay up front and then pay the remaining instrumentally. So where exactly does this maximizing come in? Because I know a lot of persons are here to actually, to actually hear that. Okay, um, uh, that's the good one. Um, I think uh, starting, up, uh, starting off as an entrepreneur in real estate uh, with limited uh, resources can be challenging. That's true. Uh, mm -hmm. But it is not impossible. And there are some steps one can use to get started. But also let me tell you something again before I get into this step. You must have a roadmap. You must have a short term and a long term. For you to achieve one you can't just jump in and become a developer you must start from somewhere that's what we call the power of 10 percent if you're a realtor and you get 10 percent imagine let's use for instance you close a deal of 10 million naira every month for instance as a realtor mm. let's use you're just closing only one deal 10 million naira every month at the end of the year you're going to have 10 million naira yes or no 
Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, true. So now you must have the culture of saving. What's your long term vision? Mm. Do you want to just be a realtor or you want to be a developer? Yeah, the developers are the big boys. You mm. understand? Mm. The developers yeah. are the big boys. Yeah, but uh, there are realtors that are also big ladies and men. You understand? Mm. But it depends on you want to know what are your roadmap? What do you want to achieve in three years? What do you want to achieve in, in, in six years? What do you want to achieve in the next 10 years? These are part of the things people need to understand. But definitely, you must have to start from somewhere, which is real though. Now, I'm going to be sharing you with a step-by-step -step you need to have. In little ways, you can easily be generating these in steps to get you uh, starting in real estate with limited resources. One, you need to research the market. Research the market. Now, uh, I, I always get this thing sometimes when persons will tell you, ah, this price, oh, I don't think the people on my contact list buy it. Mm. You understand? Yeah, I now tell true. them, it, 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 you also need to understand what are the budget of your contact list? Which persons are on your contact list? Are they students? Mm. Are they working class? Are they business owners? Now, there are ways you could do it. You have Facebook, you have Instagram, you have uh, WhatsApp, you have Twitter. Today, we also have TikTok today. Yeah. So you can leverage on these things for you to sell your markets. So I always don't uh, believe that you're only trying to limit yourself because people you have direct contact with are uh, students mm. or uh, the particular uh, uh, calibers of people that they might not buy. Yeah. When you post, tomorrow someone might refer you to someone that wants to buy a land wow. or that wants to buy yeah. a property. So first of all, you need to research the market. Know what the market holds, holds for you. You get researching yeah. the market goes a long way. What are the listing listing? What are the listings in the available? How much is it? If you're starting off as a realtor for the first time, you can't just run in and go and start looking for properties of 50 million naira, 100 million naira for a start. On the average, everyone is looking to buy a uh, get own a land within the uh, ranges of hundred, uh, sorry, uh, five hundred thousand naira to two million naira on the average. Now you can look out for properties like this. People want to buy properties like that because they are cheap. Mm. They buy it up. Look, then without you build your network, from there you have gotten from five hundred to two million. Now yeah. build from yeah. two million, <laughs> build from two million to ten million. That's how it grows. There's no magic there. It's a process. When you've been able to research, do your homework, that's the first step. The second step, it's network. You need to network with other realtors, developers, companies that are into the business. Reach out to them. We are listings. Get those listings. Make sure that you are the direct brief. Mm. If you're not a direct brief, you're in that you're in direct indirect brief. Know that when the commissions come, you're going to share your commission with the person that have the direct brief. Mm. Yeah. But when you have the direct brief to the companies or or, 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 or the listing, you yeah. earn your money. That's what we talk the power of 10%. Yeah, you understand? Yeah. Okay. It goes yeah. a long yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine you you your client wants to pay your points to your calculation or more. So I'm going to take I'm going to be bank taking this home. You understand? So that is the essence of networking. New, no new people, know the people in the industry. When you're moving to Lagos, for instance, you're moving to Abuja, you're coming down to Oka. No people that are in the business, know the people that are the Lord in the business, people that are controlling that sector. That will help you grow faster. And another thing I always say, you need to start small. You need to start small. If you have a plan to be a, a developer in 10 years time, start now. Start saving. With the commissions you're getting. Some of the commissions you might want to get. You might tell them, okay, I don't want this commission. Give me the commission as land. Instead of the company to pay you to the pay commission. Me funds. Yes, yeah. It gives you, yes, it gives you the land. Now, what happens to that land? If the land, for instance, is selling for 3.5 million naira, and in 10 years' time, that land might worth 50 million naira. For instance, you sell that land. At 60 million naira, you're making a lot of money, right? Yeah, yeah, you are. That's what you've been able to build over the years. You could see your transition from being a realtor into a developer with very, very. So mm -hmm. that won't be only one, that will be only two. You might have up to like over 10 plots. Yeah. There's this saying that I always say that 
every year make sure you buy two properties or two landed two land two, sorry two plots yes okay now in 10 years you're going to have 20 plots mm. now in 10 years time if you want to start studying you start from the one you started in the year one the first day you bought wow. that has actually appreciated before you wow. get to another 20 years you would have bought, bought, bought your properties <laughs> and get start to seek wow. me wow wow you understand but yeah, people basically don't understand that you understand so imagine when you keep on doing that you're making money for yourself you're going to see you're going to be financially okay we're also going to be looking at uh, uh look at creative um ways on creating uh financing op opportunities like uh look for uh private lenders crowdfund uh, funding and um sell out uh financing now uh what do i have to say about this uh, when you look for creative uh, financing options like the private lender someone might want to lend you money to start up to buy up something i might see a property or a house i want to renovate i might need 20 million naira to renovate the house and i have 10 million naira i borrow 10 million naira from the lender i develop the house when i started giving up i give him the mode the mode on how i'm going to pay pay back pay back those payments and with the interest i might meet my couple of friends Steve, I need 10 million naira. Who could contribute money? Who could buy all this mm, property? Yeah, right. yeah. Sorry, I have to use speaking here. But you understand. <laughs> I'm trying to engage. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I, uh, you understand. So, understand. because that's actually how these things actually happen. You understand? You, mm. There's no magic. There's no magic in this business. It has its own principles. Everything in business has its own principles. You also look out for low cost property to renovate. Very low cost property. There are properties that the owner doesn't have five million naira again. That what he needs just five million naira to finish up the the house. Get, invest five million naira into the business and do it. You discuss your terms and condition, how much you get, and the rest. If you if, if you if it's going to sell the property, if the property is worth this amount, this is how much I'm getting apart from my capital. Yeah. You are investing into low cost properties. And and the most most important thing you need to do when you're looking at these things, you need you need to be patient. You need to be patient. Real estate is not a get rich scheme. Yeah. Yes. It follows the process. It's not, it, you, you don't can't jump into real estate and you want to make billions overnight. Now nah. you don't have to follow a process. So with time. You have to record your stories. I was uh, sorry. I have to deviate a little. I was li listening to the um, the interview made uh, when they were interviewing Pep Guardiola, the manager of Man City, when they were telling him that uh, Haaland scored five goals. Why did he sub him? He should have gotten the like, six goals to break Messi's record. And I told us that Haaland is still young. That yeah. if if Haaland breaks the record now. That it's going to be boring. It's going to be very, very boring mm. for him and his career. Okay. You know, so, and people laughed over it. And to some persons, you might say, eh, it is wrong. To some persons, will say it's right. Mm. The thing has to do with real estate. There is kind of money you might hit today and you go back and relax. You don't want to put in energies for you to continue mm. to push the business. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah, that's just how those things work. And however, uh, you can apply for loans uh, to fund your real estate investment or invest in the real estate investment trust. Uh, you don't need to have much uh, amount to invest that part. That's where I said I'm going to share the link uh, on on the comment section yeah. where people can easily go back and uh, and uh, and read up. You understand? Yeah. It, it will guide them very well. Yeah, it's, it's going to guide them for them to be able to understand these things um on how this thing definitely works i i think i have actually pointed out uh the step or well, one is uh used to get started with limited resources yes, i just dropped the link on the comment section so uh you can also uh, go through it uh you can also read up most other contents i also done on real estate when you get on facebook so that's it on uh, that's on uh, getting started in real estate um with limited resources Oh, wow, uh, Mr. Okuchuku, I must say a big thank you. Uh, you've you one of the things you've 
uh, you've done in these discussions, you've um, dissuaded the fear that persons would normally have going into real estate simply because they feel that there's not so much on on board and then uh you you've been kind enough to share the tenets of entrepreneurship with us now when you said uh, real estate is not magic I almost dropped out laughing and it's near get rich quick quick skip too I, I think real estate is one of the industries uh, that helps you leverage on the power of process to your development as an individual to your development you know you're, you're talking character you're talking build real estate is one of those industries that um leverages helps you leverage on that you mentioned networks which is very powerful and i'm not just leaving this town to uh maybe abuja to lagos to anambra to benin to maybe sokoto to do real estate I'm, i'm also looking forward to connecting with those who are the names there those who uh, share my ideologies in real estate those who are looking to solve problems and look forward to um w- working with them as well and then another beautiful thing i love that you shared was the fact that it's not a that there's there's room to start little yeah it's it's yeah, not yeah. A, a process where someone just has to throw it all in pull out all the results you know and run off the market yes yeah there are persons who may be part-time realtors there are persons who may not be coming into the real estate development for a lifetime maybe it's what they want to do for some period of time given that they have passion for it or all but the the, the enlightenment that it's actually a place where we need patience and that time will encourage a lot of realtors who may feel that they've experienced a very bad time in the real estate market uh for want of time there are some questions i would not delve into but i just want to know um because i, I want to do a, a quick um run through the sme funding opportunity now you remember for those who are here from the beginning i mentioned that uh we have an sme funding opportunity under the ogotuku azubike sme development initiative whereby um entrepreneurs and who run small or medium enterprises whether you are an aspirer or you already have a business uh under this under these enterprises you know micro small medium and you're looking forward to boosting to scaling your business you have an idea that's valuable you have an idea that is not just profit oriented but also looks forward to creating positive change in your community this is an sme fund you should apply for um i'm going to share my screen now so you can also see the sme fund again yeah if you know anyone who uh is an entrepreneur who is uh say struggling or who is in need of, of resources to to expand to scale their business please let them know i i will drop the this this flyer the flyer currently seems already available on our social media platforms i would see if before I, I i tidy up this discourse i'll be able to um drop it in the chat section as well but if i'm not able to do that you can find the flyers on our facebook and um, twitter we have a linkedin we have an instagram handle you're looking for um honorable justice innocent umesh dk foundation or you're looking for iau foundation or you're looking for umesh dk foundation the idea is to go there just pick up the flyer let those persons know you already have the link let this person know about this opportunity the purpose is to help nurture the spirit of entrepreneurship personally one of the ideals we have is that communities can get better sustainable development goals can be achieved when persons in communities don't just wait for um, external bodies to to um, lead the initiative to create change you know uh, we believe and that's the reason for this fund that you in that community or someone you know now just in case you know an entrepreneur you can help them fill out the form get in touch with them provide us with their details we would love to to also know what that person in your community is doing to firstly take change and most importantly how we can come in to see that that person or those persons get the the, the funding they need to take their business to the next level it's 7 minutes past 12 um i would want to take a question i'd want to take just one question i will soon be tying up given the time we had i would love to take just one question uh mr kutuku thank you thank you i i i would say this 
I, it's always wonderful when we see young people who are leveraging on the power of mentorship, the power of time, the power of youth to invest in what they really have passion doing and not just doing it for the sake of funds, but doing it such that they can um, uh, create change, building character in the process. And I must say we've, we've drawn from your wealth of knowledge in today's discourse and we are immensely grateful for that. All right, um, I'm going to switch back to the um so I'm, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now to see if there's anyone who has a question you can just unmute and and let us know about your your question if there's anyone like that we shouldn't be tying up we have a question for mr okuchiku and yes he has provided the link to his facebook story in the in the comment section you can just quickly look through look through it and um and pick up from there. All right. So in the absence of um, questions, I really want to appreciate everyone who has come in for this discourse. Like I said, we've not been able to take um, all the questions. No, these, these are not, we, we didn't take all the questions we planned out for this discourse. And uh, because we are reliable people, we keep to time and we know your time is precious to you as well. We are grateful that you lent us that time to be part of this discussion. We don't take it for granted. We hope to keep to the time we plan. But then I must say a big thank you to Paul, uh, to, to Braham. Thank you for joining in. Uh, Joy, thank you. Bells, um, thank you so much. Barrister Ruth, my associate um, legal and research head here at um, Honorable Justice Innocent to Mezuliki Foundation joined in in this conversation. Thank you so much, Ma. We're really, we're really grateful that you made our time to be here. Our SAB members for the foundation are also here too. Abraham, I can see you. Joshua, I can see you. Thank you so much. Peno, thanks for joining in. Uh, Chijindu, uh, Chibuke, Nebe, uh, Benita, and uh, a couple of others too who were uh, who were part of this discourse and had stepped out already thanks for making our time to be here what uh, what do you expect from the next edition of etiquettes and i say that while i i wrap up etiquettes is going to continue you have innovations you have um ideas you have topics you want us to do an in-depth research into you have persons you want us to reach out to to interview on this discourse let us know through our official line or through uh, submissions dot h uh, at um, hjiuf foundation dot org. Let us know through any of our social. You can just leave a comment on any of our social media platforms, and it will get to us. Just tag your comment uh, hashtag tuasf or hashtag the butuku azubike um, sme fund. Now, lastly, as I tidy up. Please do as well to leave comments on how this discourse was. Well, you're free to send in your review on the discourse, what you felt. Uh, we'll be taking it on our official line, uh, how you felt, what the discourse, what you gained, uh, the, the knowledge you, you drew from this discourse. You feel free to let us have any of that on our social media platforms, and we would be glad to reference it or even take some of those comments during the next session of Etiquette. So this is why I draw the curtain, saying a big thank you once more to you, Mr. Okuchuku. Uh, Mr. Okuchuku is the Chief Operating Officer and the Managing Director of the Mumba Group. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for availing us your time and your wisdom on this session. Thank you very much for uh, having me at your meeting of edition. Uh, I look forward to uh, coming here again. And... Um, I know it might not be now, but I know sometime in the future, at least uh, we'll have more traction to ourselves by then. But mm. that's the thing. Thank you very much. And also thank you to the foundation for also um, finding me um, worthy to be uh, your first speaker at your media edition. Um, yeah. It's an honor and uh, I appreciate that. My regards to everyone at the foundation and uh, I will say do you enjoy Grace. I will. I will. I'll send it across uh ladies and gentlemen this is where we bring the maiden edition of etiquettes to a close remember we, we want your feedback we want to know how you felt and we want to know how we can make the next edition of etiquettes better for you this is me saying thank you this is me saying thanks for being a part of this discourse and have a very wonderful time 
from Honorable Justice Innocent to Ms. Becky Foundation. Good afternoon.